Little Jasmine was playing football with her friends when they stopped because someone had to go pee. Yeah, I gotta go too. They all went to the woods, and Jasmine's jaw dropped upon seeing them. What in the world? Why are they all peeing standing up like that? Jasmine is the youngest child and only girl in an all-boy family. Her mother passed away when she was born, so she grew up with her father and three brothers. Her dad is a successful businessman who can ensure a happy life for his three sons, but struggles with Jasmine because he's only used to raising boys. Although he tried his best to raise a daughter, Jasmine became more like a fourth son. She has short hair, dresses like them, and plays her brother's games. She even tends to skip showers for days at a time. Her bedroom is messy and decorated with boy stuff. Her brothers even gave her a boy's name. One day while playing, her eldest brother Gary called over his younger siblings. Roll call! Like soldiers, the three younger siblings lined up from tallest to shortest, proclaiming their names loud and proud. Gary! Aaron! Nick! Jas- Jasmine? Her brothers looked at her, frowning disapprovingly. Then Gary had an idea. Nah, that doesn't sound right. How would you like a new name? A new name? Not a real new name. Just a nickname. Something cool we can call you. How about that? Uh, sure. How about we call her Gucci? Gucci? Like the luxury brand? Yeah, it sounds cool. So, how about that, Jasmine? You like Gucci? Jasmine nodded, and from that day forward, everyone called her Gucci. She learned to like it more than her real name, and as she grew up, she just assumed she was a boy. That is, until the incident happened today. Feeling absolutely bamboozled, Jasmine dashed home to tell her dad what she saw. Dad, am I a different type of boy? <laughs> no, you're a girl, Jasmine. A girl? Does it matter? Um, not really. Okay, cool. That's all I need to know. After that, Jasmine still dressed up and played boys' games, until a shocking event happened when she turned 12. One day at school, Jasmine suddenly felt very tired, and her stomach hurt. Can I use the restroom, please? Yes, is everything okay? Y yeah, I... But the moment she stood up, the boy sitting next to her started yelling to the rest of their classmates. Gucci, there's something on your pants! Jasmine looked down, and her face started burning bright red. She was frozen as laughter erupted from the rest of the classroom. Unable to take another second of it, she sprinted from the room and didn't look back. Despite her teacher shouting her name down the hall, Jasmine couldn't understand what was happening to her and frantically searched the school for her brothers. When she did find them, they were just as puzzled as she was. Trying to figure out what to do, they didn't realize they had ended up in front of the nurse's office. Once safe inside the office, Jasmine asked, Give it to me straight, ma'am. Am I dying? Um, no. Oh, my dog. I'm totally dying, aren't I? I got a big game coming up. I, I haven't even tried. You're not dying. It's called period, honey. Then how, how do I stop it from happening? You can't. It's gonna keep happening because you're becoming a woman. A woman? What the? But problems still follow Jasmine even after she entered high school. And one of those problems was Mean Girls. We all know you're gay, Gucci. Tell us who you have a crush on. Well, I've liked you for a long time, Tiffany. Want to go on a date? Ugh, in your dreams. Jasmine was pleased with herself as the group of girls stormed off. One day, Jasmine was walking down the stairs when she slipped, but someone caught her. She looked up at her savior to find Mike, the new student slash angel who just joined her high school. This was the first time Jasmine had felt her heart beat so fast. Not counting the time, she accidentally peed on her father's Persian rug when she was four years old. Hey, shut your front door! At that moment, Jaden quickly took the opportunity, pretended to fall on the two of them, and uttered a line that still makes him admire his own disguise skills to this day. Ouch! Ouch! My ankle! Who the fudge spilled water all over the stairs? Jasmine turned to look at the person who had just spoken. Then a hand reached out. You okay, bro? Jasmine blushed and looked up. She saw Mike offering her his hand and shyly reached for it. But suddenly, it hit her. He called me bro! From then on, Jasmine continuously ran into Mike in class, in the library, and found herself falling for him. But every time Jasmine greeted him, Hey! What's up, bro? But Jasmine didn't want him to be her bro. She wanted him to be her beau. She decided it was time to do something. Jasmine secretly put food and lollipops in Mike's locker and was caught by Tiffany. You know that's a boy's locker, don't you? Sorry if you're disappointed it's not yours. 
Why don't you just quit while you're ahead, Gucci? Mike is into real girls. I bet he doesn't even know you're supposed to be one. As Tiffany laughed, Jasmine turned bright red with anger. Storming away, she was determined to become the kind of girly girl Mike could fall for. Jasmine thought she would have to change from the inside out, so this would be her first destination. However, out of much embarrassment, she resorted to wearing a hoodie to fully cover herself. Jasmine suddenly noticed a saleswoman following her around the store. I'm gonna need security to get over here now. This dude is sus. No, 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 I'm just browsing. I'm trying to find a birthday gift for my uh, sister. Ah, right on. We have some lacy ones, bright colors like neon green and hot yellow that dogs, I mean, dudes really like. Jasmine felt dizzy. Just imagining wearing any of these made her feel embarrassed. Quickly, she thanked the saleswoman for her help and told her she'd come back, then hurried out of the store. How is being a girl so difficult? I wish I had some girlfriends to help with this. I have no clue what I'm doing. As soon as Jasmine got outside, she noticed Jaden checking himself out in front of a glass door. Excellent. My cover as Jaden is perfect. No one's gonna know who I really am. Jeez, this guy again. He seemed so self-obsessed. So much more girly than I could ever be. Jasmine then immediately came up with this brilliant idea, but Jaden had already left. The next day, Jasmine saw Jaden again, who was enthusiastically chatting with the gossip girls. Do these girls know how to get to the point? This gossip is exhausting. I just need them to say something relevant about Mike so I can get on with this investigation. When the mean girls left, Jasmine finally worked up the nerve to approach him with her proposition. Can you help me be more like those other girls? Like what? Chatty? More, uh, I don't know, feminine? Um, no thanks. Oh, come on. I know you have it inside. I don't have time for this nonsense. I have a job to do. Jaden started walking away, but Jasmine wasn't going to take no for an answer. Please, I want to get Mike to like me, and he only likes girly girls. Jaden realized this could be a good opportunity for him to get to Mike, instead of directly approaching him, which could easily raise suspicion. So he agreed. Together, Jaden and Jasmine found out that he seemed to be into designer stuff. He also adored Kendall Jenner very much. Looks like Mike has expensive tastes. Money's not a problem. Then she dragged Jaden to the mall. They bought all kinds of designer dresses, high heels, and bags, which made Jaden's jaw totally drop. Jeez, I didn't expect you to be rich, Rich. My dad is a collector of sorts. He likes antiques and things. You know, like those fancy old Persian carpets, original artwork, porcelain vases and things. He has a good job, so I guess he can afford such an expensive hobby. <laughs> then Jaden also taught Jasmine how to walk and behave like a girl. Jasmine struggled a lot. She was just so used to acting like a boy that acting like a girl was more foreign to her than her dad's Nordic glassware. How come you're better at being a girl than I am? Because I spent endless days and nights doing research on this character so I could easily master all this girly stuff. Oh, I guess it's all in my jeans. And that made Jasmine fall over laughing. The following day, Jasmine came to school with her brand new look and was immediately thrust into the spotlight. However, the only ones who didn't seem to notice were Mike and Tiffany. This plan seems like a bust. You can't lose the race before you've even reached the starting line. Huh, he seems to have even more faith in me than I have in myself. Gotta trust the process, I guess. And indeed, the following days, Jaden tried his best to help Jasmine approach Mike. At lunch, when Mike passed their table, Jaden designedly dropped Jasmine's apple, which he caught just before it hit the ground. Can I sit here? After a few days, Mike fell for it hook, line, and sinker. He tracked Jasmine down at the end of the day to ask her out. So, things didn't work out between you and Tiffany? Psh, no. I found out all her designer clothes were knockoffs. Can you believe that? I just hate liars, don't you? Uh, yeah, totally. Anyway, is that yes to a date? Absolutely. Who fell for it hook, line, and sinker then? Soon enough, Jasmine and Mike were officially dating, and Jaden didn't miss this chance to follow them 24-7. Jaden always seemed to appear out of nowhere to interrupt their conversations. So, tell us a little more about yourself, Mike. Where do you live? What does your dad do for work? Well, I lost my mom when I was too young to remember her, and I've basically lived with my nanny ever since. Dad comes around sometimes, but he spends a lot of time on business trips. That must be rough. I mean, I also lost... Huh, why so busy? What exactly does he do? Mike's face seemed darkened, and Jasmine couldn't help but be a bit annoyed with Jaden's constant presence. 
She wasn't sure who was dating Mike anymore, but there were benefits to having Jaden around all the time. He seemed to be Jasmine's savior when it came to ordering food, as Mike had a terrifyingly strict diet and skincare routine. Is there anything quality on this menu? I can't eat any of these greasy, fried, fatty foods. No soda either. Only smoothies or sugar-free milk. I also go to the gym four times a week and spend the rest at a spa. You should come with me sometime. Um, sure. That sounds cool. In order to keep her girly image, Jasmine tried to delicately take a few bites of the salad and ignored her grumbling stomach. Luckily, Mike had to leave early, so once he was out of sight, Jaden slid his full plate of food over to Jasmine. Here, you could act in your natural habitat now. Ugh, thank you so much. As Jasmine began eagerly scarfing down his food, Jaden reached for Mike's unfinished drink and took a sip. What the heck is this poison? I should have you know that was the only thing Mike found acceptable on the menu. A sugar-free kale smoothie. Ick. No wonder he couldn't even finish it. Then they had a great evening talking and dining on deliciously greasy, fried, fatty foods. As they were walking back home, Jasmine twisted her ankle, still not used to wearing high heels. Without thinking, Jaden quickly piggybacked Jasmine and continued walking. Comfortable quietness fell over them. Becoming self-conscious, Jasmine broke the silence. Am I, uh, too heavy for you? Actually, yeah, next time, cut down on the chicken before twisting an ankle. How dare you? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You're fine. You're not heavy at all. I mean, maybe a little. <laughs> oh, shut up, you jerk. The two shared their cheerful laughter under the streetlights. Meanwhile, after seeing Jasmine and Mike together, Tiffany threw a tantrum and thought to herself she wouldn't let them off that easily. One day, when Jasmine and Mike were discussing where to go out next time, Jaden immediately seized the chance. Let's go to Mike's house. Come on. Alrighty then. My house it is. Let's go. When they arrived, Jaden couldn't stop admiring the house and looked everywhere. But only God knew he was just looking for clues. Staying fully in character, Jaden touched a little bit of everything, clinging on to Mike and gushing over everything. This house is beautiful and huge. It must be awesome living basically by yourself with all this. Is your dad around by any chance? We'd love to meet him. Meanwhile, Jasmine was becoming a little uncomfortable with how obsessed with Mike Jaden seemed to be. Is he gay? I mean, that's fine, but he could just say that. Later, when the two of them were alone, Jasmine figured it was time to confront Jaden. Hey, I was wondering, do you, like, have a crush on my boyfriend? Jaden was dumbfounded for a second, and before he could think more about it, he slyly smiled and pressed Jasmine against the wall. What makes you think so? I'm into girls. Jasmine couldn't think straight with Jaden's face so close to hers. Want me to prove it to you? Flustered, she hurriedly pulled away, heart fluttering, blushing profusely. I... I would like you to stop being a third wheel then. Thank you for helping me approach Mike and all. But now that we're dating, I would appreciate it if you could give us some space. Please. Jaden was taken aback for a second, then calmly said, You're right. Sorry. I'll back off. Being the third wheel all this time hasn't gotten me any info on Mike's dad anyway. He really was laying low. And maybe Mike didn't even know anything about what his father was doing. The FBI might need to find another way to approach this investigation. Little did Jaden know, Jasmine had become an unexpected factor in his investigation plan. Jaden was taken aback for a second, then calmly said, You're right. Sorry. I'll back off. Being the third wheel all this time hasn't gotten me any info on Mike's dad anyway. He really was laying low. And maybe Mike didn't even know anything about what his father was doing. The FBI might need to find another way to approach this investigation. Little did Jaden know, Jasmine had become an unexpected factor in his investigation plan. After that time, Jasmine and Mike had private dates, just the two of them. But they left Jasmine feeling more and more distant from him. Ugh, why does this wig have to be so long? And these freaking shoes! Why do girls want to torture themselves with these things? Jasmine thought about the last time she was with Jaden. How she could just remove the stupid heels and enjoy being carried by him. But of course, that could never happen in front of Mike. Jaden has kept his promise and leaves us to alone. But why do I feel like something is missing? You look really beautiful today. That necklace is divine. Uh, yeah, I got it from my dad's antique cabinet this morning. Guess it once belonged to some ancient Egyptian queen. My dad has a bunch of these. Oh, really? How come? Well, he developed a very deep passion for collecting antiques and has filled our whole house with all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Just then, Mike knew exactly what to do with rich and naive Jasmine while she still totally oblivious to it. 
That night, Jasmine struggled to fall asleep. She wondered how Jaden could just disappear into thin air like that. Fine, don't let me see you again. I'll make you watch me eat 10 buckets of fried chicken and then force you to run 10 laps while carrying me. Jasmine didn't realize, however, that behind her inexplicable frustration toward Jaden, she actually missed him. The next day, as soon as Jasmine arrived at school, Mike approached her urgently. Have I mentioned that I'm turning 16 this weekend? No, you haven't. Any special plans for your big day then? Yes, actually. That's why I came to find you. I wanted to make sure you had enough time to put together the most stunning outfit because I'd like you to meet my father there. You must make a good impression on him. Um, wow. I'm gonna need to think about it, okay? After that, Jasmine looked everywhere for Jaden, but couldn't find any trace of him. Jaden, where on earth have you been? That evening, while Jaden was discussing the current situation with his partner, he was surprised to see Jasmine's figure at the door. How did she find her way here? How dare you go AWOL for the past few days? Do you realize how many excuses I needed to give the student supervisor just to get your address? Then Jasmine began to tell Jaden about her latest date with Mike, how she felt that Mike was not the right match for her, and that Mike wanted to introduce her to his father at Mike's birthday party. I think I need to break things off before any family gets involved. However, after the FBI team hit a dead end because they couldn't get any intel, Jaden realized this party was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for them to catch the thief. Wait, you can't give up so soon. You were so determined to win Mike over before. Don't just dump him over cold feet. At least wait until after the party to make your decision. Yeah, you're right. I'll go to the party. After that, Jasmine left. She was trying not to feel the sadness building inside her, but the night that she and Jaden nearly kissed played on repeat in her head. Would things be different if I just confessed my feelings to Jaden? I should let him know how I feel about him. So Jasmine headed back to Jaden's place. When she was almost there, she saw him seeing someone off. Huh? There was another person at his house? Why didn't I see him just then? Jasmine quickly hid behind a wall, out of sight. That party is surely our golden ticket. And we thought you going undercover as Jaden and giving that dude a makeover was all in vain. He's a she. And her name is Jasmine. Oh, did someone catch feelings? Don't forget that you're an FBI agent, James. <laughs> Jaden, that is. <laughs> Jasmine couldn't believe what she just heard and saw. When the man left, she stormed right over to Jaden. When were you going to tell me about your double life, James? Ugh, I wish I could tell you everything, but I really can't. But I won't deny what you did here. I'm an FBI agent, and I've been undercover as a high school student to, to follow Mike. Jasmine, please listen to me. I'll tell you everything when the right time comes. So I was just a tool that you used to get closer to Mike. And since that didn't work, you're done with me? No, that's not. And why Mike? What do you need from him? I can't tell you anything else right now. But please just be careful around him, okay? He's not as nice as he tries to seem. I'm going to send FBI agents to keep an eye on you at the party. No, you will not. You won't do anything because you and the FBI are going to leave me alone. Jasmine, please. As much as it hurt to look at him again, Jasmine turned back around. My friends call me Gucci, but I guess you wouldn't know. While Jasmine was still mad at Jaden, she couldn't help questioning why the FBI had to send people to follow Mike. Suddenly, she remembered the overheard conversation. That party was surely our golden ticket. And we thought you going undercover as Jaden and giving that dude a makeover was all in vain. Maybe I could find the answer at Mike's birthday party. In the following days, Jaden relentlessly tried in every way to make amends with Jasmine. He messaged her on every social platform, from Facebook to Instagram to Twitter, and she blocked him on each one. He flew paper planes that read, I'm sorry, into Jasmine's room, but she just stared coldly at him through the window while tearing the planes all up and throwing them in the trash. One morning, Jasmine woke up and even found a dove delivering Jaden's apology letter, but she completely ignored it still. Mike's birthday party finally came. Why do I feel so unsettled? Maybe it was because of Gary's hamburger this afternoon? Meanwhile, Mike was also lost in his own thoughts. Will Dad be able to get on with the plan? I wonder what disguise he'll show up in. Right then, Tiffany approached them. Mike, I have a present for you. Mike opened the envelope to find pictures of Jasmine from when she was a tomboy. I just wanted to remind you of the person you're really dating. I don't care about who she was before, because I love who she is now, my amazing girlfriend. Jasmine felt partly appreciative of Mike's feelings for her, 
but she was also exhausted from the pressure of trying to be someone she wasn't. If only you knew that this isn't the real me. As they walked away, Mike leaned in close and whispered in Jasmine's ear, Let's go meet my dad. Privately. Jasmine followed Mike to the rooftop, but she saw nobody when they got there. Where is he? Just be patient. He always shows up on time. At that moment, a kind-looking old man appeared. Jasmine looked around in confusion, wondering where he had come from. Before she could introduce herself, he started to speak. So you must be the lovely Jasmine. Mike has told me so much about you. I heard your father is a famous collector of antiquities. Y yes you know my dad? I know he has something that's truly coveted. Jasmine had no idea what he was talking about. She turned to Mike and saw him mouthing, It's you. Come here, girl. I have a gift for you. A diamond ring that's perfect for your delicate hands. Jasmine hesitated, but somehow she found herself slowly reaching out her hand. Just before her hand could reach his, there was a rustling sound. Rat! Suddenly, there was a loud explosion and smoke filled the air. Jasmine fell to the ground, unconscious. Jaden rushed in and saw Mike's father disappear into the smoke as they fled. His head told him to chase them, but seeing Jasmine lying on the ground, he immediately ran to Jasmine and carried her out of there. Jasmine woke up and saw her dad and three brothers anxiously standing around. Through their accounts, she knew that an anonymous message had been sent to her father last night demanding he hand over a precious necklace in exchange for Jasmine. The police confirmed that the sender of that threatening message is a career thief. But I wonder how he knew our family had that necklace. Jasmine recalled wearing that necklace to see Mike and revealing to him that her dad was an antique collector. Could that very thief be... Remember, he's been doing this for a long time. They call him the Phantom Thief. Surely he has a talent for sniffing out valuable items and evading the police. Unfortunately... It's the same this time. Actually, that young police officer could have caught him, but he chose to save your sister. Our family owes him big time. Is that young police officer Jaden? Later, Jaden came to visit Jasmine at the hospital. Can you tell me the truth now? Is the FBI chasing a career criminal who is none other than Mike's dad? You're right, because he works in mysterious ways. I had to approach him through his son, Mike. So why didn't you arrest him when you had the chance? Weren't you just waiting for that moment? Because, because you were in danger. At that moment, I could only think about getting to you. <sighs> <clears throat> All right, I'll give you that one. Can you tell me what you found out? Maybe I can help. Then Jaden told Jasmine that through spying on Mike, he discovered that Mike was his father's informant. Mike would scour rich girls, then point out the targets to his father who'd steal their valuables. That's why Mike had targeted Tiffany before. But as soon as he learned she was a fake rich girl and Jasmine was the real deal, he switched his focus to Jasmine. I am so sorry I kept the truth from you for so long. I really care about you, and I was trying to keep you from getting hurt. And you did anyway. I'm sorry. I hope you can forgive me. You did save my life after all. I think we can call it square. So, what's our next move then? I really don't know. I might have an idea. Elsewhere, Mike and his dad were scheming. I didn't expect that sissy Jaden to be in the FBI. Don't worry, I know how to deal with him. The next day, reports of an antique auction flooded the news. A once-in-a-lifetime exhibition, all from one man's private collection, will be auctioned to the highest bidder. The collection includes antiquities from all over the world, including a necklace said to belong to Cleopatra. Its estimated value is over $100 billion. The streets were also plastered with billboards and banners about that auction. In the evening of the auction, all of VIPs of the upper class gathered in the hotel's main lobby to prepare for the big event. In addition, hundreds of security guards and police officers were hired to guard the auction jewelry 24-7. Before the start of the auction, Jasmine's dad gave a welcome speech to all the guests. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to welcome you all to today's event. As you know, I collect antiques as a hobby, so to share some of the joy this collection has brought me, the profits from today's auction will be donated to the orphanage. Sir, is it true that Cleopatra's necklace will also be auctioned today? That's right. However, it's not here. It's currently being kept in a very secure place that even a mosquito couldn't get through and will be presented during the final round. Aren't you afraid that the Phantom Thief, Master of Disguise, will steal it? Well, he can certainly try me. <laughs> the whole crowd burst into laughter without knowing, from a corner, an elegant lady was watching them all with a smirk on her face.
At nine o'clock sharp, while the sounds of the auction echoed through the hotel's halls, someone in a black shirt and wearing a backpack appeared at the door, trying to put a key in the lock. Freeze! Hands over your head! Busted, you thief! I'm... Uh, I'm... not... In the lobby, chaos reigned after it became known that the phantom thief had approached the treasure. Jasmine was extremely nervous, too. Before long, a police officer went onto the stage. Please don't worry, the thief was apprehended by the police while trying to open the door. The auction will continue as scheduled. Everyone felt relieved, and the room erupted into applause. At that moment, the elegant yet mysterious lady walked toward the elevator quietly, heading to the penthouse. She then swiftly snuck into the room and retrieved the necklace with ease. Those stupid cops must be bringing that fool down to the station right now. She then put the box into her bag and left the room. Suddenly, an old janitor bumped into her. I'm... I'm terribly sorry, miss. The elegant lady grumbled, then used the emergency exit to rush up to the rooftop. On the roof, a helicopter was already waiting, with Mike inside. Mike's dad quickly gave him the necklace. Just when the helicopter took off, policemen came rushing to catch him. We finally got you, you weasel! Ha <laughs> ha! I've still got the necklace. I win again, you fools. Oh, you mean this necklace? What? H how could you? It turned out that Jaden had swapped the box when they bumped into each other in the hall. Upon this admission, in the helicopter, Mike eagerly opened the box, which turned out to be just a jumping jack toy. No! After the police took Mike's dad away, Jasmine and her dad rushed to Jaden. Thank you so much for saving my daughter and still catching the thief. Thank you for all your help. We couldn't have caught him if you didn't fabricate this event. This whole thing was Jasmine's idea, and the event itself was fake. All the antiques auctioned tonight were real, and those proceeds will still go to charity. <laughs> we did it. You're right. We did it. Whatever happened with the other thief who got caught earlier? Oh, he was hired to distract the FBI, but we knew from the start he wasn't our thief. Luckily, the arrest announcement was just the thing we needed to get Mike's dad to make his move and to make him think he was going to get away with it. Now I just need to know how you switch those boxes so smoothly. Are you a magician too? <laughs> nope, I'm just me. The next day, Jaden finally had some time alone with Jasmine, and it was finally time to tell her the rest of everything. It might not be my place to say, but I understand how you've been feeling. Trying to be someone? Heck, it's my job. But it's not your job to change to make other people like you. The right people are the ones who love you for who you really are. People like, uh, me. Jasmine was touched. She had so many things she wanted to say, but she was simply speechless. She turned to Jaden, and upon seeing just his side profile, she blushed. I, I, uh, are you okay? Jasmine was going to respond, but she hiccuped again. I think I know what to do. Aha! A snowstorm's coming! Perfect for a race. Let's go, my loyal soldiers! Looks like a big storm, guys. Shall we head home? Scared already? Cowards! I was born and raised in the snow. This is nothing. Then I signaled for Bam and Holly to speed up, but they stopped and barked nonstop instead. Is that pile of snow moving? I hurriedly ran over to check. Oh, MG, it's a boy. No, an angel with blonde hair. My heart was racing. Is this love at first sight? H help me. No matter how much Eldon and Era objected, I insisted on bringing this guy back to my place. I had to take care of him myself. Oh, looks like he'd woken up. Are you okay? Where am I? You're in my house. I'm Brenna, by the way. I found- Oh, God. Huh? What's wrong? Something on my face? Um, no. It's just that you're too beautiful. Like a real-life Snow White. Then he said his name's Beavis. He came here to travel, but unfortunately was met by the snowstorm. Yeah, it's gonna snow heavily in the next couple of days, so you should stay here until you recover. After a few days, Beavis got better, so I showed him around. On the sledge. Although Bam and Holly were practically just walking, Beavis still freaked out so much, he huddled up against me. <laughs> Hold on tight! I'm speeding up! We went up a hill, then through a pine forest, and arrived at, ta-da, probably the biggest frozen lake he had ever seen. I taught Beavis how to drill a hole in the ice, then he excitedly dropped the fishing line. 
the following days, I continued taking him sightseeing, and we were basically inseparable. We went to see polar bears kayaking among the icebergs. I taught him how to make instant snow by spraying boiling water into the cold air, and we even watched the spectacular auroras together. Wow, I've never seen such beautiful scenery before. Yeah, and I'd never seen such a beautiful face before. Just like that, Beavis spent day after another with me here in the Arctic. It's been so much fun, but for some reason, my friends Eldon and Era were not having any of it. They seemed to hold grudges against him or something. One time when I was arranging supplies in the root cellar, I heard Beavis's ear-piercing scream. I hurriedly checked and saw a white fox dashing out, followed by giggles outside the window. You're such a chicken, big city boy. It's just an extra-large kitty. Then Eldon and Era burst into laughter. Ugh, can those two show a little hospitality? At dinner, I cooked him my signature dish as an apology to Beavis for those naughty friends of mine. He was totally cool about it and even told me stories about his friends back at home and about their lives in Florida. Whoa, it sounds so magical. I wish I could lounge around on a beach and soak up the sun while enjoying my coconut drink too. I went to sleep dreaming about the beautiful urban life. Suddenly, a knock on my bedroom door woke me up. I stumbled to answer it and saw Beavis. Hey, Brenna, could you take me to the toilet? It's too dark outside and that fox might come back. <laughs> How cute! He's really good at coming up with excuses to be with me. W while waiting for Beavis, I planned out what we're going to do tomorrow. As he got back from the outhouse, ooh, I couldn't contain my excitement and told him right away. Uh, <clears throat> hey, I'm all better now. Maybe it's time for me to go home. Huh? Why so sudden? I'm sorry, but I really can't take this anymore. No, how could my first love end this fast? It hasn't even started. Brenna, it's so tough for me to live here. I don't want to boil ice every time I need a cup of water or go to the toilet out in the freezing cold. And how tiring that we can only go around on sleds. But even if we had a car, there's literally nowhere to go in this gloomy place. But still, I've endured it all this whole time because I can't leave you. I think I'm in love with you. Beavis, I... How about you going to the city with me so that we could stay together? Oh my, it turned out that we both have feelings for each other, but because of that, he had to suffer in silence. Such a sweet guy. And it's true, he wasn't built for this harsh climate. He didn't belong here. The next morning, I told Eldon and Ira that I wanted to hang out in Miami for some days. Brenna, I don't think it's a good idea. That pansy boy must have coaxed you to do this. Don't buy those sweet words. I tried my best to explain how nice and polite Beavis was, but they wouldn't listen. Girl, he got you all blinded. You've only known him for a few days, not enough to tell what kind of person he is. Can't believe you're just one of those shallow girls. Who are you calling shallow? Yeah, right. I was blinded. Blinded by his kindness. Then I stormed off, leaving Eldon and Ira behind. I just worry about you. Yeah, right. Worry? Or are you just jealous of me? I came home to a shivering Beavis. He couldn't stand this freezing weather anymore, and I couldn't bear seeing him like this either. So I told Beavis that I would go with him. Look how happy Beavis was, and I too was excited to visit his hometown. It's gonna be fun! It took only less than two days for us to arrange things out, buy the tickets, ask Ira to look after Bam and Holly, and we're good to go. After a long flight, we're finally here. It looks like a completely different world in front of my eyes. Crowds of people are rushing left and right. Suddenly, I spotted something. Oh, that looks just like my Holly. What a spoiled husky. At that age, my two buddies were already the best sled dogs in the area. Oopsie. City folks don't seem too friendly, do they? Huh? What else? Why is it moving so fast and nonstop? While I hesitated to take a step, Beavis suddenly carried me up in the air. Don't worry, I got you. Oh boy, he's so sweet. Beavis then got me transformed into a city girl. He took me shopping, then got my hair dyed. I really like my silky black hair, but Beavis said this looked better on me. This too, baby girl. This is a tattoo parlor, isn't it? Seeing my confusion, Beavis explained that couples here usually get tattooed on important occasions, and today marks the first day that you walk into my world, so I want it imprinted in my heart. So Beavis and I got matching tattoos that he chose, a weird-looking red shape behind the ears. It might not look pretty, but was definitely unique enough to be special for just us two. Once we were done shopping, we went to a luxurious villa. Oh my, is he taking me to his parents? I'm so nervous, not sure how I should behave when Beavis comforted me. They were nice, don't worry, just do as they tell you to. Just then, the main door opened. Everyone turned to look at us full of excitement. This must be the first time Beavis took his girlfriend home then. Uh, hello. Hello, everyone. 
I... Suddenly a man walked straight over and lifted my chin. Very similar, but... But this, but that. Just look at her birthmark. It's Demi. Thank, Thank goodness. goodness. Our, our beloved daughter has returned. returned. I was still processing everything when everyone rushed to hug me and bombarded me with questions. I turned to Beavis for help, but where is he? What's going on? I tried to explain that I was Brenna, born in the snowy Arctic. Both my parents had passed away and this was my first time leaving my hometown. But to no avail. My precious daughter, Beavis told us everything. You fell in the woods and had a concussion, so you're having a temporary memory loss. Just get rested for now, okay? Oh, where is Beavis then? I gotta ask him something. Don't worry, your savior will be well rewarded. You'll see him tomorrow. <sighs> everything happens so fast, I'm totally lost. But the most I could do now is to wait until tomorrow. I'm sure Beavis will clear things up. Upon catching sight of Beavis, I immediately unloaded it all onto him. Shush, just listen to me first. Turned out, Beavis worked here for the Atchley's family. He escorted their daughter, Demi, on a trip to the mountains, but she ran away. Mrs. Atchley was utterly furious about this and used his ill mother to blackmail him into finding Demi. That's why he risked going out into the snowstorm where we met. But why me? I have nothing to do with Demi. You and Demi look just like twins. <gasps> when I saw you, I couldn't believe my eyes either. I did what I did because I was worried for my mom. I hope you can forgive me and help us, please. I'll soon find Demi. So, you were only using me? No, I'm truly in love with you, Brenna. I didn't want to be away from you, and you deserve a much better life here, with me. But... Just wait until I find Demi, then we will run away and live happily together. Poor Beavis. He seriously had the worst luck. If I were him, I guess I would do the same. So I reluctantly lived as Demi. Luckily, her parents thought I lost my memory, which made it not too hard to be her. One day, I received a text from Eldon. I suddenly remembered that I'd been away from home for almost a month. I wonder if Bam and Holly miss me. To say I was not one bit homesick would be a lie. But there's no way I'd speak to Eldon. So I called Era to catch up on things and ask for her help in the search for Demi. It had been a few days already, but neither Ira nor Beavis had heard anything about Demi. Feeling too restless, I went for a walk in the garden. Wait, what's that noise? Alden? See what you got yourself into, idiot. Told ya, I saw right through him. Why are you here? And what are you talking about? Ira already told me. Beavis obviously only sees you as someone else's replacement. He doesn't love you. Let's go home. No, let me go. Stop bothering my girl. Leave me alone, please. You're only making things worse. This place has everything and it's much better than a hellhole in the middle of nowhere. Live there all you want. Don't drag me down with you. Eldon immediately let my hand go. He didn't say another word, but gave me a disappointed look. Was that too much? Well, he's the one who kept sticking his nose in others' business. Who is he to control me? After that day, I still saw him lurking around the mansion sometimes. So annoying. Who in their right mind would be out in this scorching heat? Today, Mom, I mean Mrs. Ashley, suddenly took me shopping. I guess having a family like this isn't too bad, huh? She said tonight I was attending an important dinner party, so I had to put on this tight dress along with a pair of killer heels. They looked pretty good, but I really couldn't breathe. Jeez, how can anyone do this? It's literally harder than walking on thin ice. Ah! Phew, that was close. Thank you, sir. I- Careful, I can't be around to protect you all the time. Alden, why is he still so kind to me? I wanted to say something to him, but Mom already signaled for me to hurry up from afar. I rushed to the car, leaving him there. Thanks to Mom's preparation, the guys there were staring at me without blinking, especially the special guest. Mom told me that I was supposed to be smiley and friendly to Otis, but how was I supposed to do that when he kept rambling all these boring stories? My eyes wandered around, searching for Beavis and an excuse to leave. What are you looking for, sweetie? The most important person is already right in front of you. Ugh! I pushed him away, then ran off. Ah, uh, there Beavis is! We should get out of this boring place! Oh, Mrs. Ashley's here too? What? That's it? I risked being in danger just to find her and bring her back to you. Don't take me for a fool. I'm only her stepmother, but I can tell that girl isn't Demi. I just let you off since she resembled her quite a bit. You're in no position to demand. But didn't you get Otis all smitten also? Isn't that all you care about anyway? So give me my money. I had to rack my brain to sweet talk that girl into coming here. That means your sickly mother doesn't exist either, does she? Oh, sweetie, you've heard it all. So what if that's true? You won't get a dime. I'll expose your scheme. Where are you going, sweetheart? It's bedtime.
So my phone was confiscated and I'd been locked in this room for three days straight. They wanted me to give in and date Otis, but no way. I tried every possible way to escape, but always ended up getting caught. One morning, I was woken up by dogs barking. Annoyed, I went to the balcony to check and saw Eldon and Bam. Eldon signaled for me to stay calm and flew a paper plane to me, then swiftly left. Let's see. <gasps> Fine then, if that's what he wants, let's end things here once and for all. I agreed to date Otis like the Ashleys demanded. I even enthusiastically chose my own outfit, did my makeup with a cute hairstyle. Mr. and Mrs. Ashley were very pleased with that. They couldn't hide their excitement and even stood at the gate to welcome Otis when he came to pick me up. As his supercar arrived, Otis the preppy guy had just stepped out when Eldon signaled Bam to charge at him and scared him away. Meanwhile, the Ashleys were screaming for security. I was gonna leave in the midst of the chaos, but don't you dare run away. Ugh! Holly jumped out of nowhere and made Beavis fall to his knees. Holly then bit on his pants and dragged him around. Good job, baby! Right then, a car stopped in front of us and a girl stepped out who looked just like me. <gasps> this must be Demi! Who are you? Why do you look exactly like my daughter? What kind of father are you to not recognize your own child? This is precisely why I ran away from home. After that, Demi exposed her stepmother and Beavis's evil plan in my stead. Demi's dad frantically apologized to his daughter and admitted that he'd always been so caught up with work that he overlooked family and his wife's scheme. Get out of my sight at once and don't even think about bringing a dime with you. Then Eldon dragged me into the car and in the driver's seat was... Era! Thank you, Era. Just me? Eldon did most of it. I shyly looked over at Eldon. Thank you, and I'm sorry. It's okay, we're friends after all. I'll take care of you at all costs. Um, uh, anyway, just hope that you've learned your lesson now, Brunna. Not all that glitters is gold. Eldon's right. This beautiful city is glamorous, but I don't belong here. I belong to the wind and snow, to the winterland I call home. Time to go back. The trip to the city was like a fever dream, but let's leave it all behind, cause I'm busy racing with Eldon. As expected, he's always as slow as a turtle. Hi, this is for you. For me? What's the occasion? The day we stop being friends. Brenna, what do you say if we become more than friends? Augustine and I almost took down this fake Roblox plushie smuggling empire when the gang leader suddenly turned vigilant and ordered his members to arm lock us. Pablo, you got it all wrong. We're here to make a business deal. You don't fool me, you sneaky little rats. Think you can catch me? I am invincible! Mwahahaha! <laughs> Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Pizza's here. Please take your order. Did any of you morons order pizza? Sorry, boss. I, I did. I was starving. Please could I have a bite quickly before executing these snakes? Go get the door, you dumbo. You, hands over your head. Pablo then came, hide behind the door, as it opened, and standing there was Jane. Hi, lunchtime. Jane then pulled up her skirt slowly, revealing her stocking. While the gang were dumbfounded, Augustine quickly restrained the gang member, while Jane slammed the door onto Pablo. And me? I stomped onto the guy's foot, elbowed him in the face, and pinned him on the ground. Phew, all hail Queen Jane. Hi, my name is Naomi, a special agent, and these are my partners. Augustine and Jane. With Augustine as leader, we three have successfully cracked the hardest cases, including this one. Augustine is such a respectable senior agent to me, while Jane is actually my annoying stepsister slash partner. It's your turn to write Pablo's case report. Don't push it onto me. Why do you always try to get away with tasks? Just like how you made me do all the dishes at home all the time, too. Team, we got a new case. Amy, straight A student. Lawrence High's representative to the upcoming United Nations event, missing since Monday. Urgent request from parents and the school to bring the subject back safely. Suspect number one, Shirley, direct competitor for the school representative title, a mean girl in disguise. So, starting tomorrow, we'll be students at Lauren High to investigate it. Can I join the girl posse and befriend Shirley? Nothing helps spilling the tea easier than blending in with the gossip girls. Okay, but we also got Diane, Amy's stepsister, quiet and shy. Parents are freaking out and asking her to be watched 24-7 too. Jane, what do you think? I can approach Diane and keep an eye on her. Great. Remember, team, do not act by yourself under any circumstance. Lawrence High, I'm coming for you. On the first day of school with my excellent disguise, I confidently strode to the classroom. My mean girl covers quickly got everyone's attention, including this guy. Hey, cutie. Let me show you around, and you can show me the way to your heart. Marco, Lawrence High's jock with a notoriously long list of ex-girlfriends. 
Meanwhile, Augustine's also taking a good chunk of the ladies' hearts, including Shirley's, my target. So, I purposely walked past her, showcasing my $200,000 Hermes bag, and... Hey, you! Yes, take the bait, fishies. You seem to have a sensible fashion style. Wanna join our group? Sure, I'm Naomi. Right then, Jane passed by. In the shy, nerdy girl covers, of course. Hold on for a second, rookie. Did you borrow your granny's dress for school? Right, Naomi? I... I think... Oh, this hurts my eyes too. Who in God's name wears pastel pink in 2023? Shirley and her entourage were cackling while Jane gave me a hostile look and stormed off. Oh, please. She didn't have to take it so personally. She should thank me for that instead, as now she can naturally be friends with Diane too. Since then, I started hanging around with Shirley and the girls. They love gossiping, which is indeed pointless until the topic of Amy came up. Have guys seen Amy around at all recently? Amy? Who on earth? Amy Hayward, the one competing against you for the school's representative. Oh, that stupid contest. I couldn't care less about it, actually. Thank God it's over. I only joined it because my dad kept insisting. Shirley didn't even remember Amy, nor did she want to compete with her. And now that I've noticed, she's boisterous at times, but actually quite straightforward. My guts are telling me it's not her. So, I brought up my concerns about the case at our next meeting. I'm pretty sure Shirley is clear. What? Do you even think before saying? She's her number one suspect. Plus, from what Diane told me, she's always picking on other students. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she has ill intentions towards Amy. You need to stop judging people too quickly. <laughs> Excuse me? How about you stop siding with the devils? Or you find it hard because you're one too? Enough. Let's just keep your assumptions on hold for now. We need more clues before acting on anything. Dang it. If only I got some solid evidence. Jane just always slowed down the investigation. So the next day, I went to find Diane myself to ask some more questions about Amy. But Marco stopped me with a bunch of roses. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Sugar is sweet. And so are you. Be my girl, will you? I was still processing this when Augustine came from afar and went straight into the roses. Oops, sorry. I had my sunglasses on. Marco looked like an erupting volcano while Shirley gave an earth-shaking squeal. Eee! Oh, that body and that grace. Oh, great lord, please spare me. During independent reading, Marco and his army came marching toward Augustine to pick a fight. But Augustine completely ignored Marco, which infuriated him even more. Hey, you! Turn your coconut head around and have some courage to face me. Augustine calmly stood up returned his book as if Marco was invisible, and came to ask me to have lunch with him? He pulled me out of there, leaving Marco behind, grunting like a mad pig. It feels good living student life and having the boys chasing after you. Stay away from those teenage boys from me, will you? I don't see why. Don't get your identity revealed. Don't worry, and Marco's such a kid, not my type. By the way, you want to experience a heartfelt infatuation too? Think Shirley is laying an eye on you. The look on his face is priceless. <laughs> Who would have thought this charismatic Asian is actually allergic to girls? During PE, I saw Shirley purposefully tripped and fell in the direction of Augustine, but ended up on the floor instead. Augustine then dashed over to me for help when Marco stopped him midway. Still holding grudges with Augustine, Marco announced a dodgeball war. Oh boy, didn't know what he got himself into. Augustine is our top agent. He dodged every single bullet aimed at him, let alone these plain red balls. In return, Augustine gave Marco one hit of a lifetime that knocked him down on the ground. Lucky for him, Diane was nearby and kind enough to give him a hand. Still, Marco gave the biggest grin when he spotted me and headed over to hand me a piece of paper. Will you go out with me? What a loser. He must have taken a new interest in you, Naomi. Rumor had it he asked Amy out, but then she went missing. Probably that poor girl couldn't handle him. <laughs> Marco met up with Amy before she went missing. Uh-oh, he's our number one suspect now, not Shirley. I eagerly updated Augustine on Marco. I have a feeling Marco knows something about the case that might lead us to Amy. I was thinking I could pretend to go on a date with him. That's too dangerous. What if he's behind it all? You might get into trouble, Naomi. No worries, he seems really into me. He asked Amy out and she went missing right after. Who knows what could happen to you? But he's the only lead we have now. Shirley is already out of the picture, and I know how to protect myself if anything happens. Please. And yes, the time has come for me to end this case. 
During the date, Marco was so caring, but I was dying to know what happened to Amy that day. So, I heard you and Amy were a thing before? Nah, we never got together. How can you be so perfect? Are you an angel? I heard otherwise. Rumors had it you even went out with her. Let's just focus on us, why don't you? But I want to know more about you, too. Fine, fine. If you want to know it that bad, I did ask her out, but I never saw her that day. Her sister showed up instead, sat there at a reserved table, and said something about Amy wouldn't be around for a while. I thought they wanted to mess with me, so I just left. Diane knew Amy would disappear even before she went missing? Did Diane have anything to do with this? She might have been the very piece we'd overlooked from the beginning. I got to the office and saw Augustine fidgeting around. Are you okay? Did Marco do anything to you? I'm fine. And I got the biggest news. I then told Augustine and Jane everything and posed my doubts for Diane. Why Diane? She's just a vulnerable victim who gets picked on all the time. And you know by who? Surely. She might appear vulnerable, but who knows what she's got inside. And you remember how she came to help Marco up that time? Now that I think about it, she was so worried for him. She obviously likes Marco. It's possible she might get jealous of her sister. Oh, stop. Not everyone is a jello like you. What? Team, this is getting nowhere. For now, let's just agree on keeping Diane close. Again, no one is to act by themselves. A jello? Just watch me nail this case before you do, Jane. The next morning, I saw Diane secretly watching Marco play basketball. I swear to God, Diane is definitely into him and involved in her sister's missing. But Augustine wouldn't let me do anything. That'd leave me with the only option, which is to keep Diane's activities on watch. Indeed, she's been acting very strange lately. She received regular phone calls and would get out of class, just to return with a troubled face. I decided to tail her that afternoon. She looked very suspicious and kept turning around to check if anyone was following her. She's definitely hiding something. We were walking for quite some time, passing a vast area of abandoned field crops, until she stopped in front of a shabby house. This is clearly not a building for residency. The whole place looked so torn apart, and even had traps everywhere. Thank God I had all that training back in the academy to spot these deadly traps. Suddenly, I saw a flashing shadow sprinting right across the room. I quickly followed and saw a door leading to the dark basement. Diane, or whoever was staying here, is not going to be simple to deal with. Oh no, it's a trap! If you dare move an inch, you're done. Now tell me, who are you? Are you from the Dixie Mafia trying to get back at me? Mafia? N no, you got it wrong. I, I came to check on the electricity for this building. Please calm down. She's lying again, Mr. Gordon. I knew she was up to no good. Speak now if you want to stay intact. Oh, no, no, no. I should have listened to Augustine and not let my stupid adrenaline take over. Is this the end of my mission? The end of my life? Suddenly, there was a loud banging sound. FBI, don't you dare touch her. It's Augustine. FBI, what? No, no, what's happening? Are you not from the gang? Jane was there for me too. She quickly took the bomb remote and turned it off. Fake bomb. Are you kidding? I quickly got out of the trap safely. Special Agent Naomi Cooper, where are you hiding Amy? No, no, you got it all wrong. Mr. Gordon's Amy's biological father. How can he hurt her? I looked at Augustine and Jane, who were as shocked as I was. Mr. Gordon used to work for the gang, but he turned his life around. That's why he thought you were the old gang, coming at him for revenge. Not long ago, he contracted a serious illness that needs a kidney transplant, and Amy is the only relative he's got left. You're telling me Amy agreed to give him a kidney? Then why are you here in the dark? Why hide? Because Amy's mom hated me and forbade me from seeing her, let alone giving me a whole kidney. But Amy is my daughter with a golden heart, even though I didn't want to. She insisted on giving me a kidney so I could live on. If mom knew about it, she would never agree. That's why Amy had to run away to have the transplant done with Mr. Gordon. Where is she now? Resting in that room. Don't worry, Mr. Gordon has been taking well care of her. Meanwhile, I helped bring them food and necessities. I quickly kicked the door open and saw Amy lying on the bed. What was all the commotion, Diane? Did you bring dad some squash? Augustine, Jane, and I saw it through now. We all got it wrong this whole time. The next day, we went to find Amy's mother and had a talk with her. She was shocked at first, but after knowing everything, she realized how wrong it was to separate father and daughter. She was so touched by her daughter's precious heart and agreed to let Amy come visit Mr. Gordon from now on. Looking at the sisters makes me think about my own sis. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. We gave each other a tight hug. We are sisters too in the end. Well, case closed. Let's go for some grand celebration, shall we? Actually, I have a date now. Why don't you take Naomi with you? 
Then she just left us there. Cheeky Jane. I'm so relieved you're okay, Naomi. Because if anything happens to you... Yeah, Augustine? If anything happens, I would die for you. It's the country's fair day today. Or as I like to call it, my winning day. See that huge plushie over there? It's about to become mine. Ready, set, and yes! Bullseye! I excitedly took the bear when it suddenly got yanked away by this crazy bull. Hey, I won that bear fair and square. But I saw it first. Now hand it over, hobbit. Hobbit? I yanked the bear from him, but it ended up ripping in half. His girlfriend burst into tears, and now I'm like a red rag to him. He rushed towards me, and before I could even think straight, my fist took over. How many times have I told you, Angie? A girl doesn't just raise her fist and cause trouble like that. It was self-defense. He was gonna hit me, Mom. I'm done with this. Like father, like daughter. Why are you even bringing him up? He left us years ago, so let him stay out of our lives. Even thinking about him made my blood boil. I turned to the window, avoiding the look I knew my mom was giving me. When we got home, we found the door open. Something wasn't right. I quickly ran into the house and saw black shadows standing in our living room. Who are you people? What are you doing in my house? All hail our new leader! The lights suddenly came back on, and I saw them all bow to... Me? Angelina, I've been looking forward to meeting you. I'm Nick Mason, Mr. Bruno's right-hand man. My dad sent you here? From this day on, you will become our new leader of the ex-organization, on his behalf. You gotta be kidding me! For so many years, he hasn't cared about whether we live or die, and now he suddenly wants me to take over? And look at you all. This organization seems no good. Please don't misunderstand us. Ex-organization was founded by your father to help the local people and fight for justice. But things took a horrible turn, so I'm afraid he's gone to jail for a little while. He's in jail? Oh, my head. Fighting for justice? That's why he's in jail now? Your father put the safety of the seaport local first. In doing so, he fell into the enemy's trap. You will understand him better if you accept his wish and become our leader. As much as I hate to admit it, I missed my dad. He once promised that he would skip his work and hang out with me on my birthday, but then he just disappeared without a word and has been quiet for the past six years. Until now. Darling, I have something for you. She gave me some old letters and a plushy bear, which I'd begged my dad to buy for me. She'd hid it from me the whole time, as she was mad at my dad for always risking his life for things that weren't any of his business. It turned out that my dad had still cared about me, even without me knowing. Mom, I've made up my mind. I hope you'll support me. So, my mom and I had a long journey to the seaport of the city where my dad's ex-organization was secretly operating. We walked into the market, then stopped at a large fish shop. How on earth does an organization have their secret base in such a crowded place? The most dangerous place is the safest one. Remember that. I remembered my dad used to say this to me when I was a kid, too. This must be his crazy idea. Nick led me into a room at the back of the store and introduced this as the organization's base. So, this is where my dad used to work, and he'd still kept the same old hat all these years? Let's get to work. There's been a lot of theft going on in town lately. Every night, the thieves break into stores and steal everything they can. People are panicking right now, so we need to solve this as soon as possible. Isn't this the police's responsibility? If they were capable, we wouldn't have to get involved. That's why your father maintains this organization. Now you need to settle in a bit. I've arranged your accommodation and enrolled you in a local school. Remember, your identity is top secret. For the next few days, at 5 a.m. every morning, Uncle Nick got me up and took me to the port to tell me more about the thieves. However, he just joined the fish auction the whole morning instead of actually doing anything serious. So, I went somewhere else and pretended to talk to the fishmongers about the burglaries in town. At that moment, a guy in a cap that covered his face bumped into me. Hey, dude, nice bracelet, but ever taught to apologize? Hey, hey, take it easy. You're making a scene. Okay, maybe I should just behave like a normal schoolgirl here. Having to get up so early in the morning to go to the port also made me too exhausted to study anything. One morning, I was falling asleep at my usual place when some noise woke me up. A group of gangsters was teasing a boy? Dude, I'm trying to catch some shut-eye over here. Shut up, loser. Uh-oh, they were messing with the wrong person. I grabbed a nearby mop and made some fancy moves that took them all down, then dragged the flabbergasted nerd out of there. He wasn't calm enough to run for his life. This little guy is Killian. 
Ever since that day, he kept following me and wouldn't shut up about how strong I was, saying things like, I could never imagine a small person like you having such crazy strength. Or, they all pick on me, but you, Angel, don't. Then, let's be friends. I have no peace when he's around. While I was trying to make some space for myself, a call suddenly came from Uncle Nick. One of the jewelry shops in the city just got burglarized. Can you help? What? Yeah, I'll head back to headquarters and set up a plan. You can count on me. I then hung up, and that's when I heard a ball hitting the floor. I turned around, and there was Killian, standing behind me, shocked to the core. He'd obviously heard the whole conversation. If you utter a word of this to anyone, you'll not wake to see another day. Do you hear me? I... I can help you. I know this town like the back of my hand. Okay, we can be friends. Or associates. As long as you keep quiet. After school, Killian and I rushed to the crime scene. While wandering around, I spotted a shiny thing among the broken glass. It must have been from those thieves. But wait, I've seen this D symbol somewhere. I was about to pick it up when Killian grabbed my hand, shivering. Bro, it's her who attacked us back then. That gangster suddenly came at me. I tried to dodge him, but ended up toppling over backwards. Suddenly, a strong arm held me back and shielded me from the punch. Mamma mia! Who's this handsome hunk? I wrapped my arms around him and pulled out my inner damsel in distress. Oh, my hero! These jerks won't leave me alone! Please save me! I'm scared! Mess with my friend one more time and you're dead meat. Get lost! He turned to me, making sure I was okay, then parted way. Through Killian, I found out his name is Frank, a senior at our school, and he's known for his cold and reserved demeanor. Definitely my type of guy. But wait, what about the bracelet? I returned to the broken glass window. The bracelet was nowhere to be found. At school, all students were constantly talking about these recent burglaries. Everyone was worried about who would be the next victim. When will all this nonsense stop? I wonder who their next target will be. Don't you see? The recent victims were all the big shots in town, and the crimes were all on the days the police weren't out patrolling. So then, Graham's jewelry shop and Holden's boutique store could potentially be their next target? That makes sense! Uh, wait, Frank? Now that you're here, I feel so much safer. It'll probably be Holden's because Graham already added a new security system to his shop. Please stop fiddling with your hair like that. Good observation. The police don't patrol the port tonight, so they might make a move. So stay still inside, will you, sweetie? Aww. But his sweetie still got to watch Holden shop and catch the thieves red-handed tonight. An hour had already passed, but nothing had happened. Right at that moment, Nick received a phone call that Graham's shop had just been robbed. The thieves broke the security system and everything had been taken. Nick snapped at me for acting impulsively without having any clear evidence. But this felt so sketchy, though. Holden's store was way more vulnerable. It's like they knew we were waiting to ambush them here. A few days later, while I was patrolling around the shopping street, Killian informed me that there was a suspicious masked man sneaking around the pearl shop. I immediately dashed there, right at the moment he was breaking the lock. In the blink of an eye, I kicked him, knocking him to the ground. Angelina! Holy crickets, are you okay? I looked up to see Frank running towards me. The thief immediately rose up, causing me to fall back, then fled the scene right away. Catch the thief, quick! Frank and Killian darted past me and followed the guy. I waited for them at the harbor, but only Killian came back. Oh, sorry, Angelina, but I have to say this. There's something fishy about Frank. I think he's on the thief's side. Oh, come on. Are you jealous of him? How do I know you're not their spy? What do you mean? You've been acting suspicious from the get-go. You wouldn't leave me alone for a sec. And remember how you listened in on my conversation with Nick? And what about when you made me so sure it was Holden Shop that would be the next target, hmm? And now you're blaming Frank? You're so wrapped up in that jerk. I saw him purposefully let that thief go. When I was about to catch up to him, Frank suddenly stopped, making me crash into him. Then the thief got away. That, that can't be. He's always there to help me. I'm the one who's always backing you up, but you only see that fraud as your hero. Ugh, just forget it. Wait, I, I had no idea who to trust. It was all so confusing. Right at that moment, I got a message from Frank asking me to go to this meteor camping place as he had something important to say to me. Okay, it was time to confront him and get the truth. I rushed there as fast as I could, only to find... nobody? 
I looked around and noticed this suspiciously lit up tent. The tent flap suddenly opened and a shadow bolted towards me. Hey, hey, calm down. It's me. I opened my eyes to see Frank in front of me. He'd set up this whole place for me? Frank suddenly took my hand and confessed. Angelina, I've fallen head over heels for you. I was wondering, will you be my girlfriend? Together, we could be a power couple. With your ex-organization and my Dark Walkers clan backing us, how do you know I'm related to ex-organization? Ha, <laughs> I've been watching you since that first day you wandered around the fish market with that old Nick. <laughs> Remember this bracelet? You almost got me that time. You, you shameless, rotten, stinking skunk! I even trusted you over Killian! Oh, come on. It's not my fault you fell for me and betrayed your best friend. You and I are more alike than you think. It's only fitting that we become a team. Enough! Listen carefully. I'm never going to team up with a dirtbag like you. H how did you- Guys, take her! From the tents, Frank's minions came out one by one and surrounded me, then gradually tightened the siege. Let's see who's the boss now. Oh, no, 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 I fell into his trap. Those punks held a rope, ready to tie me up. But right at that moment, I heard a car engine approaching. Is that Killian leading Nick and the ex-organization? He jumped out of the car, ran past the minions and Frank to get to me. Angelina, are you alright? You're not hurt anywhere, are you? I shook my head and felt so touched. He'd come to save me. I thought you were mad at me. I was. A little bit. But I couldn't let you do all this alone, so I went to Uncle Nick. Behind Killian, Uncle Nick and the team had seized all the thieves and their ringleader Frank. Now they'd spill all their dirty secrets in front of the law. It turns out, my dad was about to expose the Darkwalker clan for their evil antics when they framed him for intentionally causing injury and put him behind bars. Since I became the new leader of X, Frank had been trying to seduce me so he could manipulate the organization. Finally, though, my dad was found innocent and released. Mom and I welcomed him home with open arms. I'm so sorry for leaving you behind. I was afraid I would put you in danger. It's all right, Dad. You must have had a hard time, too. I'm sorry for taking so long to realize how proud I am of you. I missed you so much. Dad was super impressed with what we had accomplished for the organization. He even decided to let me continue to be the leader, all the while supporting me and teaching me his tricks. And I know for sure everything will turn out okay, especially with this guy by my side. So, did I do a good job proving myself, lady boss? The vice leader position seems to suit me well, don't you think? Hmm, you do deserve a promotion. How does vice leader and boyfriend sound? How is it possible that I've never set foot in a place this close to me before? It's kind of dark and eerie. If only it was covered in flowers, then it'd totally be a Disney castle. Oh, someone's here. I went to say hi, but she didn't seem very welcoming. Stay away from this spooky place before it sucks the life out of you, young girl. So that means you're not working here anymore? The maid just shook her head before she hurried off. Here comes my chance. Hey guys, Joe Casta here. And this Dracula-esque castle is none other than Mr. Joseph Williams. Are you wondering who that is? Hmm, I'm curious too. All I know about him is that he's my parents' creditor, and I'm here to ask him to extend the deadline for their debt. But as one of his mates just quit, I could work here to pay off the debt instead, right? Hello, I'm Jocasta, your new maid. No answer. Should I just come in? If anything, the master should blame the old maid for leaving the gates open. So I had to find my own way inside. Hello? I'm the new maid. Master, are you here? No? Not here. Not here either. Is he still sleeping at this hour? Oh, there he is. Huh? He's not old and gray like I thought he'd be. I introduced myself, then he returned to his painting, and coldly said, Work off your debt? Fine. Let's see how long you'll last. Just keep in mind, don't ever make me angry. Oh, master, you're worrying over nothing. I wouldn't even care about you. But turns out, he wasn't worrying over nothing. He's actually infuriatingly difficult. The curtains must remain drawn during nighttime. There must be absolutely no noise at all, and his bedroom is strictly forbidden. Who gave you permission to sit there? Oops, I forgot. I must keep a distance of ten feet from him at all times, even during meals. Phew, finally it's time to rest. Though I've been working here for a couple of days, I'm still not used to Master Joseph's ridiculous rules. Huh? What's that staring at me? Ah! Rats! There's a rat! Help! 
What on earth are you shrieking about at this hour? You dare to disturb my sleep? Master, save me! There it is! It's coming! He stood bravely like a warrior, ready to fight the beast. Look at his broad shoulders, his hair, his chiseled face, and... His every movement is so smooth. That hideous rat was finally running scared. What a relief! You're making a fuss over nothing. Move to another room tomorrow. This one is too shabby. Looking closely, my fastidious master looks kind of handsome, doesn't he? Well, living here isn't so bad now that I've got the hang of his rules. <laughs> Bring me a cup of tea. Yes, master. Here you go. Pass it to me. Huh? Are we off social distancing now? I excitedly handed him the cup of tea, but he missed it and tea spilled all over him. Clumsy dummy! Can't you look at what you're doing? I hurriedly wiped the stain on his clothes and apologized profusely, but he roared again. Stop! How dare you come this close to me! Get out! Jeez, his temperament changed like the seasons. Hot, cold, hot, cold. Whatever. I'll just go home then. Indeed, no place like home. Oh, how comfy. I told Judy, my bestie, about my week working in the castle. Interested? Wanna come with me someday? No, no, no chance. Haven't you seen anything unusual there? Then Judy said rumor had it that a mad scientist once lived there. And werewolves too. As horrible howls could be heard during a full moon. You have to be careful. There's a reason why no one goes there. Oh no, it's today. Wolves howling under the moon? Never mind, Judy is just being childish. Who still believes in such fiction? Definitely not me. So, ta-da, I'm back again. Honestly, I need this job. I can't let him fire me, even if I have to cling to his leg and beg, but where is he? Should I? I opened the door to see him lying there, surrounded by dull paintings, while tools scattered everywhere. What happened? I tried lifting him, nudged him. Still, he wouldn't come around. Then suddenly, his eyes opened. Hey, the ten-foot rule doesn't apply because that was an emergency. Have you eaten anything since yesterday? As I thought, if you still want to kick me out now, you'll have nothing to eat. After that incident, Joseph seemed more at ease. He stopped threatening me with his rules and just let me ramble on. One time, when I was napping on the couch after cleaning, he even put a blanket on me. <laughs> I haven't slept yet, dear master. Then one day, a middle-aged woman appeared at the gate. She introduced herself as Joseph's mom and gifted him a beautiful bird. But she didn't come inside and just sarcastically said, Oh, my son's got a new mate again. This weird boy. So sorry for you, poor girl. I brought the bird to Joseph, excitedly told him that his mom just dropped by. Look what lovely present she got you. Lovely? That woman's just mocking me. I'm stuck in this place like a bird in a cage. I think it's a thoughtful gift. You seem to like painting birds. Stop prying. This is none of your business. Okay, I'm sorry. But it's your own choice to isolate yourself from the outside world. Come with me. I have something special to show you. Oh, this place is still as gorgeous as the first time I came here. Looks like Joseph is mesmerized too. See? The world is beautiful. You just need to look. We were walking along the blooming flower path. Then suddenly... He's coming! The wolf! Wolf! Then all the gardeners immediately scrammed in panic. What have I done to you, you morons? Beautiful, you say? Then Joseph stormed off. I tried to catch him, but... Ouch! I tripped over a rock. Oh, it hurts! It freaking hurts! Then let me apply the antiseptic cream. No, that will only make it worse. Maybe doing something fun could ease the pain. I'll be distracted from this. Please, can we watch a movie? And of course, he couldn't refuse. Oops. Awkward. Clearly, I didn't think it through when picking this rom-com. Wonder what my master is thinking. Oh gosh, there's no need to be that emotional. His scary appearance startled me. Eyes turned white, mouth snarled, as if he wanted to eat me alive. I tried to stay calm to ask him what was going on, but Joseph was like a madman, frantically smashing things and howling. Stop, Joseph, please don't do it. Ah, my arm. Realizing that he just hurt me, Joseph seemed to regain his senses. He then ran off in a panic. I quickly hugged him. It's okay, it's okay, calm down. Once he'd felt better, he started telling me his biggest secret. Since childhood, he'd had difficulty controlling his emotions, which often led to outbursts of anger. Later on, the moon also triggered this reaction after his stepfather passed away on a full moon night, and it then became traumatizing, because Joseph feared he'd been the cause of his death. 
That was also the cause of the tension between him and his mother. I think I was born with this strange condition. As a child, my stepfather used to give me some medicine to keep it under control. His stepfather used to give him pills? Judy also mentioned the mad scientist who used to live here. Is that... Hmm, I have to figure it out. One night, I sneaked into the room that Joseph forbade me to enter. On rummaging around, I found a tape that showed me the whole terrifying plan of his stepfather to regularly give Joseph a power-boosting pill as an experiment, and also to take him to the mountains to test out some new crazy invention. What on earth was that? But I can't tell Joseph right away. He needs to be mentally stable first. So I started off by taking him out for a walk, and when he felt comfortable enough, I suggested we go downtown together for some grocery shopping. He was just like a hedgehog, prickling up every time someone accidentally touched him. But, of course, I know how to tame this hot headmaster, just like this. There you go. Then we started tidying and redecorating the whole castle to liven up the mood of this place. When we got to the last room, his stepfather's, he seemed a bit hesitant. It's been so long. This room also needs cleaning, else the furniture may become damaged. Do you know anything about your stepfather's videos? Uh, how do you know? Then Joseph searched for a memory card, then gave it to me. I was so scared that I hid it and never dared look at it. I wanted to destroy it once, but on second thought, it contains the last images of my stepdad, so I've always kept it here. Huh? This wasn't what I meant. So there's another video apart from the ones I saw. This may shed light on everything. If you don't mind, can I watch that video? I'm quite curious. From that day, we never spoke of the videos again. Instead, we went for walks, cooked, and meditated together. And today's schedule is this art exhibition. Look at his surprised face. <laughs> they look familiar, right? Don't tell me you don't recognize your own artwork. It seems that each painting tells a story. I can't wait to know who the artist is. They must be an experienced and profound person. I knew it. These compliments will help him erase his own self-doubts. Back from the exhibition, we noticed a delicious smell coming from the dining room. Who could that be? It was Joseph's mother. Joseph seemed surprised by his mom's presence, but I wasn't, because I was the director behind the scene. In fact, I secretly asked her to organize that exhibition. Watching the video cleared everything up. On that moonlit night, the mad scientist took Joseph to the mountains to test the effects of a super power-boosting concoction. But when he saw Joseph reacting abnormally, he panicked and ran away. So the accident happened. It wasn't Joseph's fault. He was, in fact, a victim. I told Joseph's mom the truth beforehand, which led to this touching reconciliation. Now that things were clear as day, they have untied the knot in their hearts. His mother decided to move here to help him overcome his trauma of the moon with me. Oh, he also told me about the time he dropped a teacup on purpose as an excuse to push me away so that I'd be safe. How sweet and caring he is. Oh shoot, who left this curtain open? I hurried over to close it, when suddenly a hand gently touched mine. Before you came, I really never thought I'd ever have the courage to face moonlight. But Jocasta, with you by my side now, anything feels possible. I'm still waiting for the day my mom says, It's all fake. We're millionaires. This was just to teach you to be humble. But I know that'll never happen. And I'm still humble, but humble as in humble background. Hi, I'm Addison from Colorado. Ever since my dad passed away when I was seven, we've been broke. And mom got irked whenever I asked her for money. So going to this kind of expensive summer camp seems pretty far-fetched to me. Suddenly, somebody snatched the flyer out of my hands. It's Katie and Candace, the resident mean girls. Girls, are you ready for the trip yet? New hair, new nails, new clothes, all checked. What about you, Addy the Batty? Oops, sorry. We forgot that a poor loser like you could never afford to join in. I forced back tears as they burst out laughing, then left. Addison, are you okay? Don't listen to them. I can help. Stay away from me, Layla. Rich kids like you would never understand. I flicked her hand away and ran off. Hmm, let's see... Mom's getting ready for her night shift and didn't seem in such a bad mood. Maybe now is my chance to drop the question. Mom, I need some money for the school camp. It's the last chance to- We can barely afford the rent this month. Do you know that? Find a way to make money yourself instead of begging me, will you? At this age and you're still so unthoughtful. Unthoughtful? 
Have you ever been thoughtful of me? I hate how freaking poor our family is. And more than anything else, I hate you. I ran straight to my room, packed a backpack, and quickly left the house. It's already 2 a.m., and this snowstorm is only getting worse. I ignored dozens of calls from Mum. There was no way I'd return to that house, ever. Oh, it's freezing. I rummaged through my backpack for my mittens when... Oh, Alice in Wonderland, my favorite book. The most beautiful moments in my life suddenly came rushing back to me. It was when my dad read me bedtime stories every night. I'd never forgotten his gentle eyes and warm voice. As I turned the pages in hopes of distracting myself from the storm, my phone notified another call from Mum. I have to tell her not to bother me anymore. Hang on, hospital? My mom had an accident at work? I quickly got on my bike to go there, but the barreling storm threw piles of snow against me. I couldn't see anything. Ah! Oh, is it morning already? Contrary to yesterday's blizzard, everything looks as fresh as spring now. But where am I? Suddenly a giant acorn fell and broke in half in which there was a piece of paper. Welcome to Wonderland? Am I dreaming? Wake up, Addison. Mom needs you. Stop wasting time daydreaming like this. Just then, there was a shrill scream. Intruder! Restrain her! Suddenly, two strange men in uniform grabbed my arms, forced me over to a tiny rose arch, and made me go through it. I peered around feeling awestruck. I was in a huge greenhouse, and a well-dressed man was waiting for me. Hello? I'm Edward, the King of Wonderland. Welcome to my kingdom. Dad? Is that Dad? He looked so similar to my dad that I almost blurted it out. He welcomed me warmly with a table of lavish food. I hadn't eaten since last night, so I couldn't help but dig right in. Only when the clock chimed, I became aware of reality. Mom! I needed to get to her. I immediately asked King Edward for the exit. This land is beautiful, but a monster rules its gate. I don't know how you got here. But if you want to leave, you'll have to bring that monster three valuable items. Three items? I asked. Yes. Let's see what that is. Then Sir Edward approached the glass door and spoke out loud. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most handsome of them all? Your Highness, you are the most handsome, the most elegant. We wish to be as perfect as you are. <laughs> yeah. If I was you... I'd wanna be me, too. Now tell me, in order for Addison to leave here, what are the required items? To escape this land, she must acquire one fair lock of Rapunzel's hair, the scarf of Red Riding Hood, and Aladdin's magic lamp. Complete this quest before the clock strikes midnight, or be stuck in this world for an eternity. What? Are you serious? Where am I meant to find those things? Don't worry, I'll send Arthur, my close bodyguard, to accompany you. Just then, a tall, handsome guy about my age appeared. Hey, little girl, there's no time to waste. We need to leave now. Then he threw me a set of clothes and told me to change. After that, we went through the same gate as before. Only this time, it no longer led to a red rose garden, but an underground sewer system. Ew, what are we doing down here? It stinks! Arthur didn't say a word and quickly found a staircase leading above ground. I immediately followed him, and there was a busy street right in front of me. I noticed that everyone was looking at something. It was long, blonde hair falling from a skyscraper's penthouse. Huh? Rapunzel lives in the Empire State Building? Ridiculous! We quickly walked over there, but it was guarded very strictly. How can we get in? That's why I told you to wear this. So, we easily blended in with the maids and waiters and entered the tower. Wow, I've never set foot in such a luxurious house. Who are you? Startled, I turned around to see Rapunzel in the Grimm's fairy tales, standing right in front of me. But wait, why does this girl look familiar? Layla, is that you? Oh, goodness. I knew you were rich, but I didn't expect you to live in such a beautiful house. You... you know me? I excitedly showed her our class photos. Layla seemed very interested in them, but she couldn't recall anything and kept asking me to tell her more stories about school. When I was rambling about our friends to her, Arthur turned to me and whispered, You need to carry on the task now. Oh, it's been two hours already. I chose my words carefully to ask her for a lock of hair, and of course, she said yes. 
But when we were about to leave, she clung on to me. Please stay here with me. Clothes, shoes, anything here you want, I can give it to you. This one? This one also. All of this luxury stuff will all be mine? Yes, of course. Wake up. Have you forgotten what we came here for? Are you willing to give up on seeing your mother ever again for this? I'm sorry, Layla, but I really have to go. My mom's in danger. Then please take me with you. I can't stay in this hideous house anymore. Come on, you have everything on earth here. It's like heaven. No, it's hell. All this stuff is just meaningless. What I need is freedom, school, friends, and being able to do what I want. Turns out, after her parents' divorce, her dad did everything to win custody and kept her here just to make money from her gorgeous blonde hair. I miss mom. I'd rather live in a small, shabby house than this flashy, cold place. I couldn't leave her here. Suddenly, I remembered how Eugene saves Rapunzel in the movie. So after getting Layla's approval, I cut her hair short, and the three of us ran away from this penthouse. We dropped Layla off at school, where her mom was already waiting for her. The simplest things like freedom, friends, or someone who truly cares for us are much more valuable than superficial material things. Sadly, I always craved what I didn't have and took what I did have for granted. Let's go. Why are you still standing here? Huh? We have to attend the class too? Ain't no time for this. We gotta find Red Riding Hood. Without a word, Arthur just dragged me away, eventually stopping in front of a girl wearing a scarf on her head. Here she is, the person you need. I waved at her, but she just coldly looked up and asked, What do you want? Huh? Red Riding Hood was none other than Katie? Um, I'll get right to the point. I really need your red scarf. Can you excuse me? This is Gucci. Do you know how much it costs? It's from even the limited edition. Look at you. You probably don't even have a dime to your name. Yeah, it is true, but... I really need this scarf. I'll do anything you want. All right. Hope you don't regret saying that. Right after that, a luxury car came to pick us up. We stopped at an apple farm, which was familiar to me as it was where my mom worked. Well, I want to bake an apple pie for my mom, so pick me a box of apples. Remember, you have to do it alone. Your friend's out. <laughs> my mom can even pick an average of 12 boxes a day, so one box was just a piece of cake. But who knows her one box was actually a container of 1,000 pounds of apples. Did she want to bake for the whole town? Ugh, I'm exhausted. Who on earth could pick apples under this scorching heat for hours? My head started spinning. Losing balance, I fell off the ladder. Luckily, Arthur caught me just in time. Still, your mom does this every day. Can you imagine how hard she works to earn food for the family? Maybe that's why my mom is always tired and cranky. Suddenly, I missed her so much. I finally harvested enough apples and brought them into exchange for the scarf. But Katie still made me choose the 10 most perfect apples out of them. No matter which ones I chose, she gave a dissatisfied scowl. This apple is not okay. Neither is this one. It has a 2 centimeter scratch. You're too much. It's all the same. No way. Everything for my mom must be the best. She's sick, and I need a perfect pie for her. Then Katie told me that when her mom was pregnant, she found out she was sick. The doctor advised her to terminate the pregnancy for her safety, but she refused and risked her life to give birth to Katie. Hearing that story, my eyes just naturally welled up with tears. What now? Are you tired from this little bit of work? No, I just miss my mom so much. I really want to get back to her. I realized that even Katie, the heartless, mean girl, still loves her mom this much. Yet, all I do is ask and plead with my mom. I'm such a terrible child. If you love your mom that much, you know what to do from now on. Help me deliver this gift to your heroic mother, will you? And here, take it and complete the mission. Finally, we've arrived. Our final destination is a museum. Arthur said that there will be a secret room with the magic lamp, but getting the key to that room was already a hassle. There were security lasers all over the place, so we broke in through the ventilation system. Arthur tied a rope around my waist and then slowly dropped me down where the key was. Just a little more and... I got it! But as soon as I touched the key, 
A drop of my sweat fell, causing the alarm to go off. The guards rushed in from the door, but fortunately, Arthur pulled me up in time. We got out of the ventilation system, but this place was like a maze. Then Arthur pulled me to hide behind a wall. Little by little, his face was getting closer and closer to mine, and my heart was pounding like crazy. Suddenly, the whole wall behind me moved. Turns out there was a secret staircase leading down to the basement, and it took us no time to find the room. Huh? Where's the magic lamp? Arthur approached the only object in the room. It's a projector. He turned it on, then on the white wall appeared the image of my mum, being tired after a long day of work. But when she got home, she still came to check if I was sleeping well. The image of her waking up early to make me my favorite breakfast. Above all, she totally knows about the camping trip and is trying to work overtime so I could join it. Time is running out. You should hurry to go back and hand in these items. I tried to regain my composure, quickly wiped away the tears, and left with Arthur. I'll be back with my mom soon. I'm back! Please take me to the gate! Suddenly, a chiming sound got me frozen. I'm sorry, but time's up! You failed the quest. But why worry? It isn't so bad here. You'll have everything you could ever want. At any cost, please lead me to that monster. I don't need anything else. I just want to be with my mom. I've been thoughtless all this time. I can't leave her when she needs me most. Actually, there is no monster here. It is the greed, selfishness, and ingratitude inside of every one of us. But I can see... You already defeated your monster and learned the lesson. So, you can go back to your mom now. Huh? Everything was so bright. Where was I? Honey, you're awake, thank goodness. Someone squeezed my hand. It was mom. Mom told me how she'd collapsed at work due to overworking. Then she found out I'd fallen off my bike in the snowstorm and knocked myself unconscious. Here you go, sweetie. My mom placed some money in my hand. Now you can go on the camping trip. I'm so sorry for upsetting you. And I promise I will work extra hard so you don't have to go without. I burst into tears and shook my head. I don't need it. I don't want you working overtime and putting your health at risk for me. Having you healthy and by my side is all I need. Mom, please forgive me for everything. As we pulled apart, I noticed someone standing in the doorway. Arthur. Turns out, it was Arthur who rescued me in the snowstorm. Thank you so much. You're my knight in shining armor. Anytime. I'm just glad you're okay. I mean it. I wouldn't have completed the tasks without you. Huh? What tasks? Looking into his dreamy eyes, I honestly felt like he'd been sent by my dad to help me learn from my mistakes and be grateful for what I had. <laughs> Never mind. I'm just glad you're here.